Hi, I'm Rebecca from Ingvid. In the next few minutes, you'll learn how to ask better questions in English. Specifically, you'll learn when to use the question word what and when to use the question word which. Now, is there a difference? Yes, usually there is, and it's a very easy difference to understand once I explain it to you. But maybe you already know the difference. Maybe you already know when to use what or which. Let's find out. So, do we say, what color do you like? Or should we say, which color do you like? Think about that for a minute. Decide something, I'll tell you in a second. And here, do we say, what color do you prefer, red or blue? Or do we say, which color do you prefer, red or blue? Think about that. Got your answer? Okay, so let me tell you what we would usually say. Here, we would usually say, what color do you like? Why? Because we're asking, out of all the colors in the world, what color do you like? And here, we would usually say, which, okay? Which color do you prefer, red or blue? Why? Because here we have a specific choice, all right? So let me summarize what the difference is, okay? So when we use what, we use what to talk about things that are very broad or very general. So here, We used it to talk about general questions or very wide, broad questions, okay? Where the number of options, the number of possibilities are unknown or very large, okay? Which is much uh, different. It's much more specific, okay? So we use which when we have limited options, not wide. We use it when we have much more limited options. For example, here, we said red or blue. It doesn't have to be only two. It could be three, four, it could be 10, but it's limited and not unlimited. That's the difference. What is used when we're asking about something general and which is used when we're asking about something specific. Now, just to explain, in this one, for example, I said that the probable answer is what color do you like? But if I showed you a card which had four colors and now it's limited, right? So then I could ask you, which color do you like? Because it's out of these four. So it becomes limited and not what color out of all the colors in the world, okay? So let's look at a few more examples so you can understand exactly how this works. All right, so let's look at some examples in a social context, in an academic context, and in a business context, okay? So for example, we could ask someone, what do you want to do today? Very general question out of all the things that we could possibly do in this city, what do you want to do? Very broad, right? Or which movie do you want to see? Star Wars or Batman? Now, the choice is much more limited, right? It's more specific. And that's why we used which. Do you see the difference between the broad and the narrow? Between the general and the specific? All right. Academically, we could ask someone, what would you like to learn? Okay, out of all the subjects in the world, what would you like to learn? So very general, very broad. or which class do you prefer, music or art? Now, of course, again, our choice is very limited between two. Again, the choice might be between more, all right, but here it's two. In a business context, we might ask, what are our options? Okay, out of all of the different things we could do, what are our options? This is a very common question that people ask in business situations, in business meetings, in negotiations, and things like that, right? Or, which conference are you attending? The one in New York or in London? Again, 
a much more limited choice, and therefore we used which. All right, so are you ready to try some on your own? Let's do that. Okay, so number one, let's pretend that you're on a date and you want to get to know the other person. So you ask them, blank kind of music do you like? What should we say? What or which? It's a very general question, right? So we say, what? What kind of music do you like? Okay, because there are all kinds of music. We didn't limit the options. All right, the next one. Let's say uh, you're thinking about learning how to play an instrument. So you go to a music store and you ask the salesperson, blank instrument is easier to learn, the guitar or the piano? What do we say there? What should we say? I think we should say <laughs> which, right? Which instrument is easier to learn? The guitar or the piano? Again, limited choice, so we're going to say which. The next one. Uh, you bump into your classmate in university and she asks you, blank course was more interesting, sociology or psychology? What's the right question word to use here? Should be, again, which, because we have limited possibilities. Next, your rich uncle wants to give you a birthday present. So he calls you and he asks you, blank kind of computer do you want? What is the right word to use here? Think about it. What? Okay, this is a general question. There are no specific possibilities mentioned. It's out of all the different kinds of computers and he's rich, your uncle's rich. He wants to buy you something. So he says, what kind of computer do you want, sweetheart? I'll get you anything you want. Okay, all right, next. You wanna make a hotel reservation and the reservation clerk asks you, Blank room would you prefer? With an ocean view or a city view? Okay, so what's the right question word to use here? Yeah, you got it. Which room, right? Once again, we have specific limited possibilities. And the last one, you're in an ESL school and your friend asks you, so, Blank exam do you have to take? The IELTS or the TOEFL? What's the right question word to use here? Also which, because again, we had a specific um, choice. All right, so I hope you got the hang of that, but to be really sure, once and for all, okay, go to our website at www.ingvid.com to do a quiz on this so that you really master this subject. And then after that, you don't have to keep thinking about it. You've got it in your head. It's very clear what is for general questions, which is for specific questions, what is very general and very broad, and then which is very specific, okay? And after that, you've mastered that part, okay? And that's the way to move forward. One step at a time, master each little part of English until you master the whole language which you can do, okay? If you want to keep improving, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get lots more lessons with shortcuts and tips to help you move forward faster, okay? All right, thanks very much for watching and all the best with your English. Bye for now.